So the aim of this video is to give you the opportunity to tackle five questions using the standard rules of differentiation and in that way to give you some feedback on your mastery of them and to help clarify any issues you might have with them. So what I suggest you do is that you write down the questions one after the other on a piece of paper and tackle them and then start the video again and see if you've got the first one right. If not, perhaps pause the video afterwards and just repeat it and then move on again to the second one, the third one, etc. in turn. So let's pause the video in a moment and I'll move on to another slide and give you the answer to the first question. So stop now. So the first exercise is to differentiate with respect to t sine cubed of t squared. So let's just write out explicitly what this means. It means the derivative with respect to t of the sine of t squared all cubed. In other words, if you're going to calculate numerically the value of the function, let's forget about the derivative for a moment, you would take your value of t, you would square it, that would give you a number, you would then take the sine of that number, that would give you another number, and then you would cube it. That's what the function means. Now, when we differentiate it, we don't work from the inside out, we work from the outside in using the chain rule. In this case, we use the chain rule for powers. And what the chain rule for powers tells us is that we should start with the power on the outside here, bring it down, decrease the power by 1, and multiply by the derivative of what is in the brackets. So what we're going to see is that the derivative with respect to t of sine cubed of t squared is, as said, we bring the 3 down, we then have whatever was in the brackets to a power which is 1 lower than the initial value, so that's 3 minus 1, so that's 2. And then we multiply by the derivative of what was in the brackets. And in this case, what was in the brackets was the sine of t squared. So let's put it back here again. The sine of t squared, and here the sine of t squared. So, let's write out this part nicely. This means the sine of t squared all squared. So we can write this as 3 times the sine squared of t squared. That notation has fewer brackets. It's easier to write down. Writing down the brackets is something you may not need to do with time, but at the beginning it certainly helps you to understand what you're doing and how to differentiate it. And then we want to differentiate this. This is the sine of a function. So again, we use the chain rule. The derivative of sine is a cosine. So we have the cosine of whatever it is multiplied by the derivative of whatever was in the argument of the sine. And what was in the argument of the sine was t squared. So I just put t squared here and t squared here. So. This derivative at the end is just 2t, so 2t is a relatively simple factor. We can bring it to the front, multiply it by 3, and this gives us 6t. The next simplest factor is the cosine of t squared, so let's write the cosine of t squared. And then the remaining factor is the sine of t squared all squared, so this is sine squared of t squared. And this is our result for the derivative with respect to t of the sine cubed of t squared. And we see that we get this result through the use of the chain rule for powers and also through use of the chain rule. Of course the chain rule for powers is just a special case of the chain rule. So if you're happy with that question Let's now move on to the next question. So, 
The next exercise asks us to differentiate this ratio of w divided by the square root of w squared plus 1. We could do this using the quotient rule, but I'm going to do it using the product rule and the chain rule. So I'm going to start off by saying that this is the derivative with respect to w of w multiplied by w squared plus 1 all to the power of minus a half. And now we see, looking at this, that we have a product of w multiplied by this factor, w squared plus 1 to the power of minus a half. I just tidy up the bracket a bit. So, we use the product rule, and this tells us that we get first term is just w, so its derivative is 1 times this factor, and that factor therefore times 1, we just write out the factor. So this is w squared plus 1 all to the power of minus a half. And then the second term we have plus w multiplied by the derivative of this factor, so again, we're going to use the chain rule for powers. We'll pull a minus a half down. We'll put that in brackets to make it clear that we are multiplying and not subtracting. This is then multiplied by w squared plus 1, all to the power of minus a half minus 1. So that is minus 3 halves, multiplied by the derivative with respect to w of the argument of the brackets which is w squared plus 1. And of course this derivative is just going to give us 2w. So, let's write this out a little bit more explicitly. We have 1 over the square root of w squared plus 1. That's our first term here. Our second term is multiplied by a minus sign, so let's immediately bring that out. We have a w here, and from here we have a 2w, so the 2 and the half will cancel, and the w will multiply with this w to give us a w squared factor. And then we have on the bottom, w squared plus 1, all to the power of 3 over 2. Now, we could leave this here. But we can actually simplify it if we put these two structures over a common denominator. And the common denominator is going to be w squared plus 1 all to the power of 3 over 2. If we look at the first term, if we put this as something times on the top, divided by w squared plus 1 to the 3 halves, then it's clear that the term on the top has got to be w squared plus 1 all to the 1. And I'm not going to write brackets around it and say it's to the 1. This divided by this is the same as 1 over the square root of w squared plus 1. The second term already has this denominator, so this just gives us minus w squared. And we see immediately that the w squared will cancel with the minus w squared and we are left in the numerator with just 1. So therefore we conclude that the derivative with respect to w of w divided by the square root of w squared plus 1 is equal to 1 divided by w squared plus 1 all to the power of 3 halves. And that is our answer. So to get this answer, we looked at our structure. We thought of this as w multiplied by this to the power of minus a half. And we've used the product rule together with the chain rule for powers to differentiate this. You could do it using the quotient rule. And if you'd like to practice that, of course, that's a good thing to do. So let's now move on to the next slide and the third question. So the next question asks us to differentiate with respect to t 
the square root of 1 minus t squared. So this means the derivative with respect to t of 1 minus t squared all to the power of a half. And I'll just tidy this bracket up here a little. So, again, we use the chain rule for powers. We bring the half down. We rewrite the same argument to the power that it had before, a half minus one. So that's minus a half. Then we multiply this by the derivative of the argument of the bracket, which was one minus t squared. So, this is a half times 1 over the square root of 1 minus t squared. That's what 1 minus t squared to the minus a half means. Multiplied by this derivative, and this derivative is going to give us 0 minus 2t. So I'll put minus 2t, and again I'm putting it in brackets to make it clear that we are multiplying and not subtracting. So the half and the factor of 2 will cancel. We'll be left with a minus sign, and therefore what we see is that the derivative with respect to t of the square root of 1 minus t squared is equal to minus, there is a factor of t which survives in the numerator, divided by the square root of 1 minus t squared. And that is our answer for this question. So, the next exercise asks us to differentiate with respect to the Greek letter phi, 1 plus 2 times the sine of 3 phi, all to the power of 4. So again, we're going to use the chain rule for powers, and we pull the power down, and then we have the argument of the brackets, 1 plus 2 times the sine of 3 phi, all to the power of 3, in other words, 4. And this will be multiplied by the derivative of the argument of the brackets. So it's going to be multiplied by the derivative of 1 plus 2 sine times three, 2 times the sine of 3 phi. So let's just write out the derivative with respect to phi of 2 times the sine of 3 phi and I've not written here the 1 plus it because the derivative of 1 is 0. So we've used the chain rule for powers here. The factor of 2 here can be pulled through the derivative and multiplies the 4. That will give us on the next line an 8. I make myself some room. Times 1 plus 2 times the sine of 3 phi, all cubed. Now, we're using the chain rule to differentiate the sine of 3 phi, and that's going to give us a cosine multiplied by the derivative of 3 phi, which will give us a factor of 3. So, in other words, we are going to get 3 times the cosine of 3 phi. So now we can take the 3, multiply it by the 8, and that's going to give us 3 8 so 24. I'm going to then write down the next simplest factor, which is the cosine of 3 phi. And then this is multiplied by 1 plus 2 times the sine of 3 phi. And those terms in the bracket here are all cubed together. So that's our result for the derivative with respect to phi of 1 plus 2 times the sine of 3 phi all to the power of 4. And to get this result we have used the chain rule for powers and the chain rule just to bring out this factor of 3 here. So let's move on now to looking at the last question in this quiz video. So in this final question, the function that we want to differentiate 
is the sine of 3 times the cosine of q squared. So again, if you try to work out a numerical value of this function for any given value of q, you would take q, you would square it, that would give you a number, you would work out the cosine of that number, multiply it by 3, and then take the sine of that number. But when we differentiate, we don't work from the inside out, we work from the outside in. And the external function here is the sine of this. So what this tells us is, using the fact that the derivative of the sine is the cosine, we have the cosine of whatever is in the brackets multiplied by the derivative, here with respect to q, of whatever was in the brackets. And the argument was originally was 3 times the cosine of q squared, so here we have 3 times the cosine of q squared, and here again we have 3 times the cosine of q squared. So this first term here, the cosine of 3 times the cosine of q squared, that's now just a multiplicative factor that stays there multiplying whatever we get here. So I can just write this out again immediately. This is the cosine of 3 times the cosine of q squared. The derivative here, well we can pull the 3 through the derivative, so I can just write out a 3. And then we have the derivative of the cosine, the derivative of cosine is minus sine, so I'll put the minus sine in brackets to make it clear that we are multiplying and not dividing. And this is a sine of q squared. And then we multiply this by the derivative with respect to q of the argument of this function. And this argument was q squared. So here we have the derivative with respect to q of q squared. And that is, of course, going to give us 2q. So now we can tidy this up. There is a factor of 3 here, and there is a 2q here, so this is going to give us 6q. But let's not forget that there is a minus sign here, so we have minus 6q. The next simplest factor is a sine of q squared, so I'll write that next. And then we are left with the cosine of 3 times the cosine of q squared. And this is our result for the derivative with respect to q of the sine of 3 times the cosine of q squared. And that is our final result, which we obtained by using the chain rule twice. So here we have the function of a function of a function, and we used the chain rule once here, and then we used it again here, and then we, all we've done is to tidy up the answer. So this is a fairly horrible looking function, and my hope is that it gives you confidence in your ability to use the chain rule repeatedly where necessary. And with that, we'll stop this video.